Hello. Welcome to the 2023 One Act Play State Festival Participating Schools Information Meeting. Uh, my name is Amy Doherty. I'm the director for One Act Play here at the League. And joining me today is Randy Hill, my assistant for One Act Play. Uh, we're going to go through a number of slides that mostly covers information that's in the participating school guide. The goal is not to share anything, not to hide anything in this meeting that's not already in the participating school guide. Um, but we know for some of you, just seeing pictures and listening to somebody explain it is easier than just reading. So uh, you can watch this at your leisure. So today we'll be doing I have three main topics. One is just to tell you about some of the documents um, and where you can find them on the website. And then I have some information about the actual day, days of the state festival, and then some other stuff that doesn't really fit into that timeline. As I said, not everything is gonna be covered here. We'll just review the participating school guide, some of the main points. Um, we need you to review the whole participating school guide from beginning to end, even if you've been in this festival for 30 years. Uh, review the O'Shaughnessy floor plan. Um, for those of you who have been here before, it has not changed. Uh, review the O'Shaughnessy parking information. Um, all of this is posted to your ADs and coaches dashboards. Um, ADs, we're still waiting for some of you to get your coaches for one act play, uh, coaches slash directors, their own dashboard. So if they don't have their own dashboard, uh, one, we don't have their information, and two, they're not able to access this. So please share this info with them right away and then add them to our website. This is where it's posted. Randy, I'll have you chime in if I lead people astray here. Randy is a better website expert than I am. So first, you'll have to log in to your coach's dashboard and or your AD's dashboard and then scroll down. So at the top on the public page, there's an area that says sports and activities. That's for the public page. So we need you to get to your dashboard. Then don't click that thing on the top, but scroll way down. And I think yours will say my sports and activities. Is that right, Randy? Yeah, that is correct. Yours okay. will say my sports and activities in a big blue banner about halfway through um, on your dashboard page. And you'll know you're on your dashboard page because your name will be in the upper left corner. Oh, perfect. Okay. Um, and then click on that sports and activities and you, a window will open. So for ADs, you'll see all of the activities your school offers. For coaches, you'll just see the activities you're involved in. So maybe you'll just see one act play. You might see one act play in speech or one act play in tennis or whatnot. And then we have um, activity resources and state tournament resources. You'll see the state tournament resources on the right. And that's where you'll find everything we're talking about here. Was, did I, I got that right? Yep, that is correct. <laughs> and again, just kind of like Amy said in the last slide, if you do not see this, um, there's one of two issues. You're either not a member of the school or assigned to one act play. So your AD would actually do this for you. So just make sure if you're not seeing any state tournament resource, those are the two potential reasons why. Um, and of course, if you don't have a dashboard, but you wouldn't get to this point if you didn't have that. So those are all needed for you to get to get here. And these resources are only meant for coaches and ADs, and that's why they're not on the public side. Perfect. Thank you. All right. So that's it about documents, but I mean, that's it for me summarizing them, but you'll have to go read all of them. Um, we're going to be once again at the O'Shaughnessy at St. Catherine University in St. Paul. They've been an excellent host for us. They have a very professional staff, especially the backstage and technical staff. They've been there for years and years and um, are very helpful to us and to our student participants. Um, first thing you'll need to do um, is drop off your set and your props, assuming you have them. Um, we did have a show a couple years ago that just had like two or three black boxes. So if that's you, this wouldn't apply to you. But assuming you're filling up that 10 by 10 space of 
all of your set and prop stuff, um, you'll need to drop them off. Um, if you perform on Thursday, you can drop them off on Wednesday night if you notify St. Kate's and that's in the participating school guide or Thursday morning between 7 a.m. and 9 a.m. Or if you don't perform until the afternoon, um, you could drop them off kind of over the lunch hour between 1230 and one. Now, I probably wouldn't recommend that if you have a ton of stuff to unload. I mean, we can't really have four plays waiting, waiting until 1245 all to unload for the afternoon. But, you know, if if your set's not terribly elaborate, that's certainly a good option for you. Um, similar for Friday, uh, you could drop off Thursday night. Note your windows a little smaller because we'll be trying to get Thursday's plays out of there um, or Friday morning or Friday at lunch. Um, this, this picture shows kind of the big driveway off of the street that's coming off of Randolph. And then on the right is, you'll see these pictures, is kind of this garage area, um, sort of a loading dock, but it's more just like a little pull in. Um, and that's where you'll pull in and unload. And then you can see in that picture on the left, there's that yellow door. That's like the stage door for people. And then once you get there, um, the St. Kate staff, the O'Shaughnessy staff will be awesome and they'll help you find your assigned 10 by 10 space. Um, they'll already be laid out. They'll show you where to put it and you can put all of your stuff there. Which brings us to the day of the festival. Maybe you already did that the morning of the festival, but um, be on set drop off. Uh, now we'll just kind of go through this in agenda order. Uh, this is on the participating school guide page four, and there's a separate document with a map. So uh, now we're just talking about dropping off your people and then parking. Um, you'll drop off in the same place and your students can walk uh, through that yellow stage door and that'll take you kind of to the backstage-ish area. Um, if you're taking a bus or a trailer, um, note there's not parking for buses and trailers on the St. Kate's campus. And we're not just saying that like to be mean when you're there, you'll literally see that there's not, I mean, it's a dense St. Paul area. Um, they do have bus and trailer parking um, just about a mile and a half away. Um, and that's in the participating school guide. So if your bus driver wants to come watch everything, you'll have to figure out how bus driver is going to travel those 1.5 miles. Um, it, I mean, it's certainly walkable if the weather is decent, but um, some schools have had, you know, just a parent shuttle the person. Um, Uber and Lyft are everywhere in St. Paul, um, but just note it's something you're going to have to plan for ahead of time. Or your bus driver can just hang out there all day. Okay, and then when you get there, this picture is of the lobby. Uh, you'll go up to the mezzanine level. So you'll go up those stairs from the lobby. Um, if you're the first play, we'd like you to register by 7.30. Um, the registering is pretty easy. It'll involve checking in with me and or me and Randy. We'll give you an envelope, tell you a few things and um, let you on your way. Um, for others, we wanna get the first play checked in first. Um, so we're saying 7.45 or 8.30. Now, if you're there at 7.35 and the first play is done, you know, we certainly can help you. We just, we don't want that first play to get in a line behind a bunch of people. Um, we do want you to be there by 8.30 because we have a director's meeting at 8.40, which we'll talk about in a second. And Randy and I'll have to come downstairs for that. So we won't be able to, you know, stay upstairs through 10 a.m. or anything. Okay, and I'm gonna add, so Randy hasn't been at one act play before. So far, if you are a director, is this making sense? This is, this is making sense. Okay. I, okay. This is one of those things like I've been there a bunch, so it's kind of easy for me to envision, but we're trying to especially be helpful to first time directors. So when you check in, um, uh, well, We'll have a list of your cast and crew because that'll be part of your registration material we got from your section. Um, and just as you know, because hopefully this was um, verified at subsections and sections, um, 
your entire group is 20 students. So that is your cast and your lighting person and um, your stage hands, et cetera, and two non-student adults. So the director and an assistant director, typically. Uh, any other people who've been part of your show, you know, the person who made the costumes or um, a student who painted the set, all those people are now spectators and fans because there's a very strict limit to the size of your cast and crew. Now, I realize a couple of those kids might be on the bus with you, but they will eventually have to buy a ticket. Um, and just a note, all that said, when you're unloading your set, like at that big garage door we showed, you can have additional adults help, you know, just to get the stuff from the parking lot or your truck or trailer inside and then back outside. So we're not counting your people at that time. Um, we actually want that to go as quick and efficiently as possible. Um, so just during that that time, you could have additional adults. Um, that doesn't apply to during the day when it's all of a sudden your school's 10 minute time to bring your stuff from backstage to the stage. Um, that strict 10 minute time, that does not, what I just said doesn't apply. Randy, did that make any sense? It did in my head, but Okay, so it's really about un the unloading of your truck. You can have extra people. Okay. Um, please just remind your students, um, communicate theater manners, um, communicate your expectations. I know these are always a whole great group of kids, but some can get excited and boisterous as I'm positive I would have been when I was... 16. So, you know, they can be taking pictures and taking selfies, but we don't want to be like running and squealing and yelling. So just remind them of that. And again, um, there's, that's kind of typical teenage behavior. So it's not like that, that makes them bad, but just, just remind them that we're trying to, you know, act professional on this day. Um, and then this piece is especially important when they're in the auditorium watching other shows, no food or drink. Um, so if they want food or drink, they'll have to be um, doing that between shows, but not right sitting inside the auditorium in those in those seats. Okay, speaking of in those seats, um, uh, typically the students, if you look at this picture here, um, there's the the lower level is where most of our spectators sit, and then that upper level is mostly going to be the student participants watching each other's shows. Um, it's not probably off limits to other people, but typically that's where the students kind of cluster. So each group just finds their own little area and they can watch each other's shows from up there. And it's it's not strictly their own area, but it feels more like it than them trying to, you know, weave through all the parents and grandparents down below. Um, please, please, please remind your students that their valuables should be um, left at home or kept on them or have a parent who's hanging on to all of them. Um, I know so many of them are used to just like leaving a backpack around school and then they come back three hours later and the backpack's there. Um, we're right in the middle of a city. Um, we This is not, you know, we don't have five police roaming this area, making sure everybody owns their own backpacks, but just we don't want to have anything misplaced or taken or somebody pick up the wrong thing, et cetera. Um, there is an area up from the balcony where students can leave like jackets, you know, if they're comfortable doing it. I probably wouldn't do it if it's like a $500 jacket, but, you know, jackets and books and their math textbook or whatever. I don't know why they're bringing their math textbook, but, you know, things <laughs> you might consider not terribly valuable, but that is not where one should leave phones, laptops, wallets, um, iPods, earbuds, etc. And I will point you to that area when you register in the morning. Okay, uh, dressing room access. Um, we were fortunate enough to have three separate dressing areas. Um, so the first, second, and third plays of the day will all get to move into a dressing room as soon as they want in the morning. And the O'Shaughnessy staff will show you where those areas are. And then if you're the fourth play of the day, you'll be 
moving into the area where the first play is first thing in the morning. So once they move out, play number four will get to occupy that area. And then once the second play moves out, play number five will get to move in. Um, and the O'Shaughnessy staff uh, will will help with that. But just so you know, if, if you're play number seven, you're not going to be in your dressing area at 8.30 in the morning. Um, also new this year, there'll be a shared warm-up space uh, provided prior to each performance. Um, the, the staff there thought it would be helpful to have one area where um, a sh just a shared warm-up space. And they proposed that. And I said, yeah, let's do it. And we'll see how that goes for this year. All right, so then in the morning, you will have registered. Um, with us, you'll remind your students about proper behavior and where they can put their stuff. And then promptly at 840, we need directors to be in and seated in the green room, both morning shows and afternoon shows. If you haven't been there before, um, when you're standing in the lobby, you'll go to the left which is essentially stage right, you'll follow this hallway that I have a picture of. Um, and the green room is essentially a room right off this hallway that leads from the lobby to the backstage area. So stand in the lobby, walk to your left, um, and then you'll be in the green room. This, is, this picture is kind of the back of the green room. It's where the judges meet during the day, but there's a little lounge area where we'll kind of, if you see in that picture, kind of in the back there behind Mike Tillman um, is where we'll meet promptly at 8.40. And again, prompt is important because there's a show ready to get going. So we really have to kind of crank through um, all of our announcements, et cetera. Uh, speaking of judges being in there, um, the judges are listed on the participating school guide, page four. Um, you can see them on your screen. Uh, there's a slight chance we might make a flip-flop depending on um, qualifying shows and conflicts. Um, if that's the case, we will let you know in email. Uh, page six has a ton of technical information provided by the O'Shaughnessy staff. Kevin Jones has been there for I don't know how long. Um, as long as I have been a part of this and prior to that, he had been there for a long time. He knows everything there is to know about the O'Shaughnessy technical information. And he he's quite familiar with our rules too and what you can and can't do. So um, be sure to review all that information. If you have any questions you know, about lights, audio, et cetera, uh, please reach out to Kevin. Um, and we did add one thing to the school guide this year. Um, just a reminder, and we'll probably tell you this at the director's meeting too, remind your students to really project their voices. Um, they can practice that during the 10 minute setup time. We would encourage them to do so. Um, this is a big theater. Um, lots of them haven't performed in a theater this size. And every year there's a couple plays where the judges comment that it was just a little hard to hear the students. So um, have them practice really projecting and let them know they should likely project more than they are anticipating. Uh, this year's oral critic will be Greg Sawyer. Uh, many of you know him. He is the president of the One Act Play Coaches Advisory Committee. And so what the oral critic does at the state tournament, um, Greg will listen to the judges talk about each play right when it's done. So when it's done, we'll usher the judges out, we'll bring them into the green room um, and they're gonna chit chat with each other. I know that's not how it works at sections, but this is a festival. So they're all gonna talk about what they thought about the play. Greg will listen, take notes, and this is happening while you're striking your set. Um, and then as soon as you're done striking your set, um, no time for hugs or pictures with grandma and grandpa yet, because we need your kids to go down to these first two rows that will be reserved. And then Greg will come out on stage and present the oral critique. Um, and these are always really interesting. And we encourage your students to listen to them um, for other shows, too. Um, I always find them quite educational. It's interesting to hear what the judges thought about each play. And then after that, your students can go back out and that's when mom 
and dad and friends can greet them. Uh, lunch, continuing on our day here, um, is covered on per the participating school guide, page three. It's a little bit different than a lot of our tournaments um, because we have a show right before lunch and a show right after lunch. And those two groups don't typically have time to run to the dining, the St. Kate's cafeteria. Um, so there'll be box lunches just for those groups um, and there's more information about that in your participating school guide. Um, everybody else, uh, the St. Kate's dining room is available and there's some extra time built in. Or there's a Carboni's a couple blocks away. And then at the end of the day, we'll have an award ceremony and we encourage all the students to stick around for this. Um, we will ask one adult and one student to represent each school and we'll have you come down to those first two rows, the same areas where you got the oral critique earlier, but there's not room for eight shows, casts of 20 in those two rows, which is why we have one adult and one student coming down. Um, each student, excuse me, each performance will be announced and will be given a participation plaque, as you see here, and we'll acknowledge the rest of your group um, Typically, Jerry Girton, you know, we'll point to them and we'll clap for them, even though they're not right there in those first two rows. Um, and then after each group gets their participating plaque, um, we will announce the starred performances. So this is a sponsored award, um, technically called the Spotlight on the Arts Award. Um, and this will go to... Um, Performance is considered to be of superior quality by a minimum of two of the three judges. Um, so this they'll they'll check off on a ballot before they discuss if they think um, a performance is of superior quality. And then those that received two stars from the three judges or two checks from the three judges will also receive the Spotlight on the Arts Award. So there's no set number. This is a festival and everybody is showcasing the best plays um, from their geographical region. And of the best plays, there's an additional award uh, just highlighting some of the out extra outstanding performances. Uh, those groups will receive a recognition trophy to take back to school and a pin for each student. And after the award ceremony, We'll ask those groups to come down on stage because we'll we will take pictures of the um, each group that receives that spotlight on the arts award. Okay, Randy, is this making sense so far? If you were a first time director, yes, definitely. Okay. Okay, okay then time to load out, um, or maybe you already did it. Participating school guide page six. Um, if you are a morning play. It's super helpful if some of you load out um, during lunch or sometime in the afternoon um, or before the end of the day. So we don't have eight different schools trying to load out right at the end of the day. Um, so if you're able to do that, we would very much appreciate it. That doesn't mean your kids have to leave, but if you can just get your, uh, your sets loaded back onto a trailer, that would be helpful. Um, no overnight storage after your performance. So you can store them overnight before your performance. So, you know, you can drop off Wednesday for a Thursday performance, but they can't keep your stuff around after you perform. And then here's some other information that didn't really fit into my agenda timeline. Uh, information for spectators. This is all on the public side of our webpage. Uh, this, is, this was taken last week. I think this is what's up there now. There's a chance there might be more things. But we have a spectator guide, and that's where you should direct fans. Um, there's parking info there, ticket info there, um, any other pertinent information. Uh, information about tickets, uh, information about streaming, the schedule, um, and we'll also post the tournament program once that's ready, which should be on Tuesday. Um, and similar to the last few years and all of our other activities, that's no longer printed. It's online only. Uh, however, it is laid out in a format that you could print it. Um, and it looks really nice printed, you know, if you have a great color printer. Um, 
but that that will be posted online. Anything else? I kind of stumbled through that, Randy. Anything else about what's posted? Nope. There? nope. And that, like you said, is all on the public page. So any um, parent, fan, spectator can go to mshsl.org um, and go to state tournament and click one act play and all of this will be available. So definitely um, have your communities get to this page so um, they know kind of what to expect uh, next week. Perfect. Uh, we are selling apparel. Last year, we did not have it on site because we had a lot of COVID restrictions still in February of 2022. We will have it on site again this year. There's hoodies and long sleeve t-shirts specific to one act play. There might be some other general MSHSL state tournament items. Um, students could also buy these online. Um, they're posted right now, but um, I believe the purchasing goes on sale the first day of the tournament. So um, online or on site, but do let your students know um, uh, both of those options, um, but especially for on site, it's cashless. So they would have to have a credit or a debit card. Um, and I know lots of teenagers aren't carrying credit or debit cards, especially when we're telling them to leave their valuables at home. Um, so if they really wanna buy in person, they'll have to, um, figure that out. You know, maybe one student with a debit card buys for two or three of them and collects cash or, or whatnot, but um, they can buy on site or online. Um, streaming of awards. Um, I've, I've still actually been working, um, working this out with um, our streaming company, NSPN.TV, um, formerly Prep Spotlight or School Space Media. Um, as of now, they're planning on streaming the award ceremonies and some pre-recorded highlights. I was talking to them about some different things uh, they can film that won't violate the uh, copyrights and royalty issues. Um, that would be um, probably starting at five each day. Um, it would be on our website and it would be free of charge. A lot of our events, um, you need a subscription for an annual subscription or a monthly subscription, um, but just to because you're not able to view the full show, um, this would be free, free of charge. And we encourage you to share this with your community. Um, if you have any questions, again, first go to that participating school guide because there's a ton of stuff in there. I'm sorry it's so long, but it's important we give you all the information. Um, my um, name and email is up there, as is Randy's. If you have questions about the program um, or submission to the program, those can all go through Ellen. And again, all of these are on the participating school guide. If you have questions that are real specific to one act play, like, can I have a dog on stage? Or are we allowed to throw glitter? Um, first, you could look at the rules and policies and see that you can't. Um, but so maybe something not covered in the rules and policies, those can all go to Jerry Girton. He's our one act play uh, clinician. Um, so has a lot of experience directing and judging and really knows the ins and outs of one act play more than Randy and I do. Uh, and again, the O'Shaughnessy technical information or questions can all go to Kevin Jones. Um, we're really looking forward to next week. It'll be our second year in person after a year of, uh, a cool attempt at doing something virtual. Um, Randy, if you were a director, is there anything that you're like, oh my gosh, you didn't cover this and it's super important? No, I think you I think you covered everything. And just to say as well, just excited to see you all next week um, in St. Paul. Yeah, this will be Randy's first one act play. So I told her to bring Kleenex. I always <laughs> seem to, there seemed to always be a lot of, um, really emotional shows and I'm a mess at the end of the day. And um, so hopefully we'll be providing a whole variety of shows and we're looking forward to seeing everything. So let us know if you have any questions.